Hi, Morley Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a South Korean film called The Gangster, The Cop, The Devil. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie starts off by showing us a white car driving around the roads of a bright lighted city. The white car then follows a black car and bumps on it when they reach an isolated place. The drivers step off their cars and the guy from the black car takes some pictures of the accident in case his insurance company asks for them. But then, the driver of the white car, whose name we don't know yet, hits him and drags him into the back seats of the black car. He stabs him, kills him, and then drives away with the white car. On the 5th of August, a hot summer day, two cops are caught up in a traffic jam. They are listening to the radio about the murder that happened in the first scene. Since traffic is not moving, one of them, t Sock, steps down of the vehicle and walks to a gambling facility. The security tries to stop him by bribing him. They put a pile of money in his pocket, but t Sock doesn't like that and beats them up slightly. He then proceeds to arrest a guy who works behind a counter. The accusation is illegal exchange of money. Meanwhile, a mafia boss, Dong Su, is practicing on a punching bag. Some of his men walk in the room and tell him about the incident. Dong Su first orders for the punching bag to be put down. His men lower the punching bag and unzip it. A man has been trapped in it, and he is all bloodied and beaten up. Dong Su then exits the building and gets into a car. He has a driver, of course, and the two other cars following him like a convoy. He calls someone in the police department and complains about the cop who burst into his gambling facility. He is paying money to this police director to keep his men from doing such things and annoy him. t Sok makes the guy he arrested drive his motorcycle and give him a ride to a crime scene. t Sok handcuffs him on the motorcycle and approaches the scene. In the background, the guy can be seen turning his motorbike around in order to escape. So t Sok approaches the scene, and it seems like the police has stumbled upon the man who was murdered. t Sok examines the scene alongside with his partner. He finds a clue that probably somebody bumped on his car from the back. Dong Su speaks with Shang Du, another gangster as it seems, and they talk about respecting their territories and their duties. They mostly disagree, and their two bodyguards, one for each, get mixed in the verbal disagreement. Dong Su gets up and punches his own bodyguard while he removes two teeth by the other bodyguard's mouth with his bare hands. He says they should not speak when the bosses are speaking. Needless to say that Shang Du has been so intimidated that he can't disagree on anything else. At the police station, a group of men are having a meeting and they are analyzing the victim's life. He has no debts and no enemies. Then, they try to build a profile around the killer. t Sok suggests that he must be a serial killer because there have been two more killings where a knife of the same length has been used. The other men disagree with t Sok, while at the same time, the director picks on him because he crushed the gambling facility without having the jurisdiction to do so. t Sok won't change his mind. He just wants to catch bad guys. Dong Su walks out of the building with his bodyguard holding an umbrella above his head. He orders his car to take the other men and go home. He is not drunk and he will drive on his own. On the way, Dong Su is driving while talking on the phone. Suddenly, a car bumps on his car from behind and he hangs up. The driver steps off the vehicles. The other man is not just anyone. He is the serial killer. Dong Su doesn't want to notify his insurance company about the accident and walks away. The killer won't let him though. He surprises Dong Su and stabs him twice, but Dong Su is not an easy target. A fight breaks out. Dong Su eventually takes the knife out of the killer's hands and stabs him back. The killer gets in his car and runs over Dong Su. Dong Su is transferred in a hospital while his men go hunting and killing other members of the underworld to get their revenge. At the same time, the serial killer cleans his knife and takes care of his wound. He then walks through an outdoor facility, finds another target, an old man, and stabs him. Dong Su wakes up and talks with his bodyguard. He has no idea who the attacker was, but he tells his guard to look for a white Sudan. t Sok visits Dong Su to get his statement, 
but Dong Su gives him nothing. Tisa goes on to examine Dong Su's car and makes the connection. A white sedan has bumped on his car from the back. It must be the same person. Tisok speaks with the police director and tells him to stop covering up for Dong Su. He says they need to bring him in for an interrogation. After all, Dong Su has seen the aggressor's face. He furthermore claims that he was right about the serial killer thing. He must be the serial killer. Who else would have the guts to attack the leader of a gang? The director doesn't want to hear it anymore and kicks him out of the office. A montage shows us the serial killer stopping by a gas station to grab a coffee from the vending machine. He spots a man and stabs him to death while at the same time, Dong Su is describing the face of the killer to a woman. She is drawing a sketch and she gets it pretty close. Dong Su gives the sketch to his bodyguard and orders him to find the attacker before the police does. While the killer is driving the truck, a man wakes up. He's been sleeping in the cabin of the truck the killer eliminates him as well, but the knife drops out of the truck and rests on the side of the road. t Sok visits Dong Su one more time to try and add some pressure on him, as well as appeal to his emotions. That killer is absolutely crazy, and he must be stopped or more people will die. Dong Su doesn't give a penny, but later on, his guard tells him that their businesses are not going well. Rumors have started around his name after he was attacked. Dong Su decides that he has to get this killer and kill him to clear his name and gain back respect. His men have found the white Sudan and the knife he uses to kill people. Dong Su invites T Sok to collaborate on the quest. If T Sok finds him first, he can bring him to justice, but if Dong Su finds him, he will punish him as he wishes. They share all the information they have till now, and Dong Su reveals his camera, which has been filming the whole time they were talking. Of course, he needs some collateral for working with the cop. And so, the gangster and the cop are working together to catch the devil. The killer must be around 35 years old, and he exclusively kills at night. t Sok shares the secret with his partner and another officer, and he tells them they will assist the gangsters, find the killer, and then they will arrest him. Dong Su tells Oh Song, his guard, that they will let the cops help them, and once they find the killer, they will get rid of them. Dong Su complicates the case a little bit more. He orders a hit on Shang Du, and the assassin uses the serial killer's knife. Not only that, but he also leaves it right there for the cops to find. When the forensics examine it, they find genetic info on it that connects it to the previous murders at the gas station. T Sok solves the puzzle and understands that Dong Su got rid of Shang Du in a way that would trick the police into thinking that the serial killer did it. T Sok visits Dong Su and they have a fight, but he can't really do much about it. The news are reporting about Shang Du's death. A new team is formatted in the police department to help the investigation. The real serial killer is watching the news in a restaurant and hums to himself. I didn't do that. A young man listens to him and looks at him frightened. The killer gets up and leaves. On his way out, he taps the young man on the shoulder. At Shang Du's funeral, the serial killer is sitting among the crowd and is keeping an eye on Dong Shu. He approaches Shang Du's bodyguard and gives him a note which reads, Shang Du was killed by my knife, but not by me. His face points at Dong Su. Dong Su and T Sok are now taking a closer look at the white sedan and they find a stain of blood under the wheel. That could potentially lead to the killer's identity. Suddenly, a group of men attacks them. They are Shang Du's men. A huge fight breaks out and the two of them manage to kick their asses. Later on, T Sok and his partners get a lead on the serial killer and they actually get to see him with their own eyes. They hunt him down along the streets, but he manages to invade them. They discover a place where the killer ate and drank. They start looking for the bottle he drank from and they visit a factory where the empty bottles get returned for recycling. They also bring the forensics team with them to try and get some new leads or clues. Dong Su is forming some new partnerships, trying to restore his business to its former glory. At the police department, a woman who works in forensics gives T Sok a file and she suggests he goes looking for that guy. He has been declared missing a long time ago, but she found a fingerprint that matches with the one she found on the white sedan's wheel. It might be some kind of misdirection, 
but it's worth looking up. Tsok visits a house which is rented by someone he suspects might be the killer. He speaks with the landlady, and she says that the man who rents the house is a good man who has never caused any trouble. He is able to find some pictures and some other clues. He compares the picture to the sketch they have from Dong Su's description, and this is definitely the serial killer. Tsok tells his partners and Dong Su about it, and they take action. They share the killer's picture with everyone, and they search the whole city for him. Unfortunately, no luck yet. The men are tired, and they decide to take a break. Dong Su is waiting for Tsok at a random meeting point. It's raining, and a female student is waiting for the bus right next to Dong Su. He gives her his umbrella to protect her from the rain till the bus gets there. Dong Su, Tsok, and their men are eating dinner when the news broadcasting on the TV draw their attention. The student to whom Dong Su gives his umbrella has been found dead. He gets angry and everyone gets up to search for the killer again. This time, they spot him in a car and a car chase takes place. Dong Su and Oh Song crush the killer and Tsok at the same time. However, the killer escapes on foot through the dark alleys. They split up to chase him. The killer stabs Oh Song but then, Dong Su is able to track him down and serve him a good beating. Dong Su takes him to a warehouse and tortures him. When he is ready to chop his head off, his shoulders, T Sok crushes into the warehouse with his car and knocks Dong Su out. He then formally arrests the killer and takes him to the police station. One more problem occurs when the police has not enough evidence to send the killer on death row. Tsok convinces Dung Su to present himself as a witness at the court. Dung Su will do it if Tsok promises him to send him in the same jail with the killer. Dung Su appears on the court and proves that the killer has indeed attacked him. When they fought, he stabbed the killer on his left side chest. The policeman undressed the killer and he has a wound right in the indicated area of his body. The killer ends up in jail alongside with Dung Su, who will probably kill him before the execution of his death sentence. Subscribe to see more videos like this, turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching.